Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I don't know why I just did that three times. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Fuzza. How are we today? i am been kind of busy all day. I've been working on stuff for next week. So I'm very excited about that uh, today. It's what I did a lot of. And of course, as soon as we get started here, that's when there's a advertisement in the background music. Uh, let's just turn it off for a second. Here we go. Okay. Today, we are starting our journey through a visual novel that I found called Cabin Fever. Now, I've never played this one before, but I have heard things about visual novels, and a lot of them kind of do somewhat um, not safe for work content, which... Um, I'm going to avoid here on the channel to the best of my ability. This one does not appear to have such things. It's only a rated T, I think, for teen. I think it was rated T, um, but it doesn't seem to be extreme, and it doesn't seem to go down, you know, that not see for work rabbit hole. Um... So that's why, I, that's why I chose it specifically to play here on the channel. And I also wanted something um, these last couple of days. I think I mentioned this yesterday, the end of yesterday's stream. I wanted to do something different that kind of filled this gap. Um, but it wasn't too intense. So that's why I picked a visual novel to even begin with. And this one supposedly has like three to four hours of gameplay. So if we do half tonight... Figure if we go about an hour and a half, two hours tonight, and we finish up the other one, or we do the other hour and a half, two hours tomorrow, uh, that should be right sweet spot at the right, ugh, right at the sweet spot. We should complete it tomorrow, and we can move on to the fun stuff coming next week. Um, so without any further ado, let me do a mute here on the background music, because we're going to go with whatever the music in the game is. I have not opened the game at all. I've downloaded it, but I haven't opened it. So we're going to, I'm going to hit the start to launch it. And yes. And we're going to pop over. Hmm. Okay. Is there background music? I think I may need to turn it up a little bit. I think I'll turn it up a little bit just to be on... Uh, let's... Card. Here we are. There we go. That might work. I can kind of hear it a little bit. So this is... Yeah, this is Cabin Fever. I have no idea what to expect. Um, but let's go. Oh, configurement settings. Let's uh, increase that a little bit. Let's increase the text speed just a bit. Ooh, customize our character. Well, we have to put in our own name. And yeah, this is available on Switch, so we're actually playing on Switch. I don't actually know if it's available on other game, other devices. Hey, how's it going? Hey. Hey, how's it going? Hey. How's it going? I think this one works for us. 
Um, hey, how's it going? Did I not do this right? Hey, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Maybe we just need to adjust this over here. Okay. Hey, 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 how's it going? Well, that's not gonna work. Have a game. Okay, come on. Oh. Kevin Keener, uh, okay. Maybe this isn't as clean, <laughs> clean as I thought it was going to be. Uh, Kevin Keener, sensitive content may not be suitable for all players. Some of this content. It's dependent on choices made during gameplay, however, you may wish to avoid playing Cabin Fever. You may feel slightly, might be negatively affected by any of the following depictions of death, suicide, depictions of suicide or self harm, uh, self partial nudity, suggestive themes. Um, yes, please take care of yourselves. This is not. Um, worth worsening your mental health if that's the thing that's going to. Do it. Uh, your mental health matters. Please look after yourself and avoid playing if you believe doing so may be harmful to you. We appreciate your interest. Look forward to seeing you in another game. Please confirm that you wish to continue. Uh, yes, I do. Prologue. I don't remember much about the world before the sickness. Uh oh. I was just a kid when it started, too young to fully grasp all the changes happening across the globe. I don't even have to talk. Looking back, it was as though some cosmic clearance bin of trashy dystopian paperbacks was spilling plot points out onto reality. You had your unknown virus, your slow to act world leaders, your extremists, deniers on one end, doomsday preppers on the other, and overall just a heck of a lot of scandal and angst. You know what? I think we need to... Uh... You know what? We're gonna be the voice of this. Uh... Overall, I had a lot of scandal and angst. What boiled down to was this. Stay away from each other. <laughs> uh, yep, that's simple. Stay away, because the thing this mutated so rapidly, spread so easily, and killed so many... Preventing transmission was the only way to stop it from wiping out the human race. Okay. Cure could could a cure could be developed, they told us. Would be, be de <sighs> would be developed, they promised. Somehow, someday, life changed. Everything from school to work to medical appointments and family dinners became virtual, and as it turns out, hosting an online society requires a lot of computer programming. Like a lot a lot. Like for me, I always had a knack for stuff like that. It was easy to get trained, and even easier to find work. Was the last time you heard of a young person say that, huh? Hey, I'm not young. I mean, I'm youngish. Young for an elf. Uh, I did programming for medical services, government websites, automated manufacturing. No shortage of freelance contracts. Of course, places like movie theater, shopping halls, and restaurants died out. Even farms and factories became rare, so much of the workforce lost. To be honest, I personally thought all of it was a net gain for the planet. A few people meant less pollution, war and terrorism dropped to an all-time low. Most people learned to be at least somewhat self-sufficient. As for me, well, since my parents died, both died not long after my high school graduation, I was probably more self-sufficient than most. I was alone for a long time, long enough to be used to it. At least I was healthy. I had my routine with lots of work to keep me busy, and the internet at my fingertips to keep me from getting bored. What more could I have wanted? Actual companionship.
I've done some research. Human on humans. As part of my study of humans. Human to human interaction is very important. Um, I'm sure you, a lot of you have seen that in the last couple of years. But it is very important still. So take even this with a grain of salt. Chapter 2. Seed. I live in an off-grid cabin that has been in my family for years. When I was young, we used to visit every summer just to get away from it all. I probably call that ironic, but every time I, I say that word, someone tells me I'm using it wrong. Anyway, when the sickness started spreading, that cabin became a place to survive. Everything a small family could need. Well, like I said, by this time I was the sole member of my bubble. I was just taking care of myself. On a good day, with the sun shining into the solar panels, I could get 30 kilowatt hours, but enough to power the appliances in the house and keep the battery bank full. And since the cabin sat near the mountains, I'd often get decent power level at night with the wind turbine hedging the air coming off the ridge. But that night, that night it was raining hard. Like most evenings, I spent this one on my computer playing my favorite idle clicker game and browsing the web for news. This was mostly doom and gloom, of course, but I liked finding the odd tech or space-related articles sprinkled in. I was thinking about how badly I wanted aliens to be real when an email alert danced in the corner of my screen. I opened it. Ah, yet another foreword from one of my more gullible asking how about a possible cure to the for the death dealing virus. A particular claim stemmed from a breakthrough in a study of bovine bodily function. Uh oh. What a load of bullshit. Literally, ha, huh? good one. It was pretty much the only company I had anymore, so yeah, I talked to myself. I deleted the email, letting out a heavy sigh. There was a point in time when I found that sort of thing amusing, the ridiculous conspiracies, the clickbait titles, but now I just found them sad. I glanced at the, talk, at, the at the clock. Time for tea. I put the computer in sleep mode and headed into the kitchen. On my way there, I accidentally kicked a broomstick laying across the floor. Well, look at my cabin. It's a freaking mess. No wonder. Ow, 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 ow. Why is that even there? I never sweep. Clearly. Clearly. In that moment, I judged myself hard. Oh well, the world had basically ended, so what was the point of cleaning up? It wasn't like I was expecting company. I kicked the broom aside and carried on. In the kitchen, I steeped a nice big cup of herbal tea, then I tossed my used tea bag into the compost bin, noting as I did that the bin was nearly full. I have to take it out soon, empty it into the tumbler with the rest of my food scraps and plant waste. Then probably in the spring I'd add fresh compost to the garden. Cool. Give my plants a healthy nutrient boost. I love my plants. I wanted them to be strong in case they ever needed to defend the cabin from zombies or traveling salespeople. <coughs> oh my gosh. Considering how, how we've played Plants vs. Zombies recently, that's kind of a funny joke. Springing to myself, I stood in the kitchen and sipped my tea. The only sound was the muffled rush of rain outside. So peaceful. <gasps> Somebody screamed. What was that? A fox prowling outside? A raccoon? Well, you spelled raccoon wrong. There wasn't a person in my garden, was there? I went out to the I went to the window, peering out into the darkness and listening hard. I don't have to go out there and check, do I? I mean someone could be in trouble. But then again, someone could be trouble. Maybe just stay on the porch and yell for whoever it is to get off the lawn. Weighing my options. Um Well it sounds like a girl. That could be something. Go outside and check. The screen really said sounded human. I just couldn't ignore that. 
as much as I wanted to stay inside warm and dry. I was raised by humanitarian hippies. And all I got there was this pesky conscience. Oh, wow. Kidding. Love you, Mom and Dad. Please don't haunt me. I set my tea and went, went to find my crank powered flashlight and shove. Wow, shoved my feet into a pair of boots. I don't know why I wanted to say shoveled. Hopefully and probably I wouldn't find anything out there. But checking was the right thing to do. I pulled open the door and stepped out, to the, out onto the porch. The flashlight flickered pathetically. Luckily all you need to power a hand crank, a hand crank flashlight is hands. I do have hands. I scanned the dark garden. Raindrops lit up as the light passed over them. The trees and shrubs around the cabin swayed. All I could hear was the wind and rain. A chill ran down my back. Yo. Yo. I said yo. Anybody out here? No. Cool. Have a good night. And a small voice stopped me in my tracks. Hello. I'm here. Would you mind um, helping me out of this, please? Somebody answered me. The rain seemed to beat down harder as my pulse sped up. I turned my flashlight toward the voice, my hand visibly trembling. It sure is cold out. I'm definitely not shaking a fear because that would be super lame. I forced myself to step down off the porch and follow the path until finally I was close enough to make out the shape of a person. As the weak flashlight beam illuminated more, I gasped. <gasps> oh. Whoever, whoever I'd been expecting to find, I certainly wasn't this delicate wisp of a girl. She's got a very interesting mm, hair color. She was so pale, she almost looked like a ghost. Even her hair... Long and clinging to her face in the rain shone bright, almost white, in the glow of the flashlight. She crouched on her hands and knees in the mud as though she'd fallen. Uh-huh. Why wouldn't she have fallen? A hundred questions raced through my head. Where did she come from? How long has she been out in the storm? Why wasn't she dressed for rain? Was she lost? Was she sick? I tried to sound tough, like my dad would have. You there. <laughs> what are you doing on my property? Okay, that sounded pathetic. Squinted, she squinted against the flashlight. Please, I got lost and I promise I wasn't trying to steal anything. So you say. Her voice quivered, which I thought was kind of dumb. After all, she was the interloper. It was me who should be freaking out, which I was. Well, then, why are you just laying on the ground there? It seems... It seems sus, really. Who wrote this? This is so pathetic. Why the heck did I add that last part? Was it lighten the mood? Was she trying to make me feel bad? Or she turned her head away. She trying to make me feel bad. Or was she stifling a cough? I took a step back, unwilling to take any chances. I can't get up. Why can't you get up? Matter of fact, tone surprised me. Expecting some elaborate sob story or pleas for food or money or medicine. It would still be a trick. She could be getting ready to rob me. At this point, my flashlight was starting to lose its brightness. I was standing there cranking the handle to power the light back up. It's a long, awkward intermission, backed by the droning sound of the flashlight being worked. But the light was coming back on, I wanted to crank a few more times to shine it brighter on her. <gasps> oh. The whole horrifying picture became clear. 
the girl had gotten her leg caught in one of my animal traps. She must not have seen the rusted old thing in the dark. I grabbed her calf and torn it open. Oh yeah, that's that's not good at all. Um, she's probably dead. Tetanus. I don't have surgical skills, do I? Okay, this probably wasn't a trick. Fear of getting close to another human. If she was sick, then I could get sick. But then I had no way of what of knowing whether or not she carried the virus, and right now she was hurt and trapped because of me. I felt horrible. If I left her to defend of herself, anything could happen. A hungry bear might come along. Weather could turn freezing, and even if she did manage to get herself out of the trap, she probably developed an infection fast and such a nasty wound. Yeah, that's what I just said. Swallowing hard, I clenched my fist and forced myself to approach her. I had to get I had to get way, way close. To way way, way too close for comfort, but I crouched, opened the trap and freed her leg. It was bleeding pretty heavily, though now I could see it up close. It didn't look as deep as I feared. Oh thank you. I'm so glad you found me. I was afraid I'd be trapped in that thing all night. You're Voice is awfully calm for probably the amount of pain that you you should probably be in. I stood up quickly and took a few steps back. For some reason, she was smiling at me. Didn't she understand it was my stupid fault she'd gotten hurt? And yeah, maybe she shouldn't have been sneaking around in the dark. My brain bickered with itself over who was to blame before realizing the girl wasn't able to to get to her feet, I reluctantly offered a hand, wishing I'd thought of put on some nitrile <laughs> Wow. Nitrile clothes. But why would I have thought of that? I hadn't seen another human in... How long had it been? Something my help, the girl climbed to her feet. She wobbled, leaned in, and grabbed my waist to use me as a crutch. Sorry. Is it okay that I'm touching you like this? No, no it's not, apparently. Her words sent a chill down. Touching. Just the thought of it made me break out in a cold sweat. Uh, it's, it's totally fine. Let's just get out of the rain. What was I doing? When had I decided to let her into my house? Warm light glowing inside the cabin was like a beacon drawing us in. Well, my brain said to myself, I guess this is the thing we're doing now. I no longer needed my flashlight, so I tucked it away and used that hand instead to help to support the injured girl up the pathway with my arm around her waist and her arm around my shoulder. It became very clear to me how small she really was. Small and delicate. Like a folded paper crane. A soggy, limp paper crane in a drenched dress that clung to her shivering body. Just then, my pen like caught on something. A nail jutting out from the side of the porch. I felt the fabric tug and rip as we moved past. Great. What an evening this was turning out to be. Great, I ripped my pants. Once me means I helped the stranger sit on a wooden chair. I made a mental note to disinfect the chair later. And my clothes. Maybe even the flashlight. But first, first aid. Where did I put that kit? I was never good at staying organized. Yeah, that's that's true. Even on my computer, all my folders and internet tabs were a mess. No point finding entropy. That was my philosophy. The drawer, I searched the drawers, the counter, floor. Nearly tripped over that dumb broom again before I finally, before finally finding the first ink kit. It was not well stocked, but it would do for now. Well, it's going to have to do for now. I gathered up some towels and my forehead thermometer, too. Then I washed my hands, pulled on some gloves and a face mask from an old box in the back of the cupboard. I brought everything over to the waiting girl. Before, let me scan your temperature. Two seconds passed before we heard the good beep, which meant the temperature, her temperature was normal.
Her eyes widened. She shook her head. Well, it was still better to be cautious. I barely breathed as I took her leg into my lap and started tending to her wound. She didn't wince or complain at all. She was tougher than she looked. I was the opposite. I knew... I looked... I was the opposite, I knew. I looked mean even when I wasn't trying. Well, maybe that's true. But on the inside, I was basically a fluffy yellow duckling with anxiety. For a situation reversed, and it was my leg all cut up like that, I'd probably have been a weepy wreck spouting rare and extravagant curse words. But she just sat there quietly watching. Are you a doctor? No, no I'm not. You honestly think I look like a doctor? Way to draw attention to your looks, idiot. I thought to myself. Not that I cared, really. It was just that I hadn't combed my hair in a few days, or weeks, or months. And I'd been living in the same set of clothes for a while now. Ratty old t-shirt with a rocket ship on the front and a pair of jeans that had long gone out of fashion. I mean, it's very difficult for jeans to go out of fashion. At least it's my understanding. My non-existent understanding of fashion. Hot, right? In another life, I might have been self-conscious. Not about my teeth, though. Never about my teeth. Dentists were kind of things of the past, and I wanted to keep my teeth. For chewing purposes, and why not, I was committed to practicing good oral hygiene. Well, I'm not sure what a doctor looks like, but you seem to know what you're doing, and you're a very kind person. So I believe you if you told me you were a doctor. Oh, that's very kind. I looked away, awkwardly holding a clean bandage against the gash in her leg. The towels I used to clean the wound were now in a pile of blood-soaked, mud-stained rags on the dirty floor. Was I a kind person? I don't know. It's just basic first aid. Not a big deal. Here, hold this. Put pressure on it while I wrap it up. I wrapped a length of gauze around her narrow leg to hold the bandage in place. Uh, that should be okay overnight, but we should probably clean it again. Rewrap it tomorrow. Her leg didn't need my nap. Instead, she wiggled her show toes and shot me a small smile. And you're going to let me stay here? Huh? I looked up at her and instantly forgot how to speak. Because suddenly I was struck by how, sh how pretty she was. I was mean. I mean. <laughs> I was mean. I mean, the rain had really done a number on her, but still. I, she doesn't look very muddy for being muddy at the moment. Wet, definitely. Still. She must have been around 20, give or take. Not too much younger than I am. Well, if she's only 20, that is much younger than I am. I'm 148. She was thin, but everyone was thin these days. With her, it was like she'd been built this way, small and delicate and weightless. Her dress was simple and a little threadbare. Green had soaked through, and I realized I could sort of see, oh gosh, her underwear, undergarments. I quickly averted you said my- clean it again tomorrow, right? Wait, go back. Uh, I quickly averted my eyes, my cheeks warming. I hope she hadn't noticed me looking, because I really didn't mean to look. You said clean it again tomorrow, right? Yeah, totally. I did, I did say that. The room seemed to spin a little, and my face went from feeling very hot to feeling very cold. Stay away from each other. That was the rule. What was I supposed to do? Well, she doesn't have a temperature, right? She's fine. Look how pit pitiful she is. 
My brain said my brain. My brain was right, and I didn't know what to do except go along with it. <laughs> well, it's not like I'm just going to send you back out into the rain. Wow. Not by yourself, anyway. Is there anyone else in your bubble? Anyone I can call to come get you, or... Her response made me too nervous to ask any f further questions. I just wasn't sure if I could handle a tragic backstory at that particular moment. In any case, I knew that if my parents were still around, they'd never have sent this girl back out into the night. They'd have let her stay, at least until she got her bearings. I sighed, giving in. Okay, well, you can sleep on my couch tonight. We'll figure out the rest tomorrow. We should really stay at least six feet apart, though. No, thank you. Ah! No, thank you. Thank you so much. She nodded and gently removed her leg from my lap. Moving back, making more space between us. I sat to examine the rip in my pant leg. Meanwhile, my brain tried to understand what was happening. I brought a stranger into my house. I didn't know who she was or where she'd come from. This seemed like a bad idea and a tad surreal. I like these pants. Oh no, did you get hurt too? No. No, just a rip. Oh, that's not so bad. Gee, thanks. I got up and made even more space between us. She put, stood up too, testing her weight on her injured leg. Wow, it already feels so much better. You must have a magical healing touch. Not really. I'm thinking she must be one of these weird, optimistic people. Also, it was hard to think straight with her standing up in that very damp, very revealing dress. We need to take that dress off. Um, that came out wrong. Uh, what I mean is, it's it's wet and cold, and I'm sure you'd feel better if you changed it to something dry and warm. I'm sure I have some extra clothes you can wear. Hello. Really? Really. Uh, yes. So let I'm gonna go get some old clothes from my storage closet. Haven't worn them since the teenage years. And too small for me. Might work for her. Here, they're all clean. <laughs> Drop in the basket and walk backwards to away from it. That's so so nice of you. I'll get changed now. Cool. You do that. Okay, she's come back and it's part of oh gosh. Old school uniform. Oh my. Uh, much younger and smaller when I wore that shirt, but even still, it, uh, she's swimming in it. Okay. Um, I must be huge. That's all I can say. <laughs> I haven't felt this comfy since I don't know when. It's a school shirt, right? I always liked the look of school uniforms, but I never got to wear one. All my classes were online. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there are more buttons upward, too. Um, that made me a little sad. You hear that? I a few memories of the world before the sickness. It's hard to imagine not having any at all. Um... Yeah, let's let's establish this question. It's very important right now. Twenty-one. My birthday was actually last week. 
Okay, Whew. that's good. <laughs> Oh, yay. Um, what, 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 what is your name? Oh, of course I do. It's Mallory. Oh, that's nice. Well, not nice. Weird to meet you, I guess. Um, not used to people. Yep. Uh, yeah. I get it. I didn't mean to trespass onto your property. I really did get lost. And then the rain started, and... I could hear these dogs or something howling. I was scared, and I ran towards the first light I saw. Which was my house? Why are you so far out here? Extra secure fence for the chickens. But uh, what were you doing out here in the first place? I would rather not talk about that. Uh kind of important right now. Should I press for more? Um, hmm. This is chill. That's, that's, that's the goal, for it to be chill tonight. <laughs> um, we'll let it go. Fine, she's had a rough night. It was too much and I really needed sleep. My toe was hurting. <laughs> the broom that I don't use from earlier that hasn't moved an inch from where it was. You can see it just behind her. Um, don't worry about it. Well, you're here now, so just, um, yeah, take the opportunity to get rest, I guess. Uh, I scurried around her to grab blankets and maintain a wide berth as I dropped them on the couch. Offered her a glass of water, pointed out the bathroom, asked if she needed anything. All from afar, because, gosh, why get close to somebody? This is perfect. Thank you so, so much for everything. Truly, I'm lucky to have met you. Mm-hmm. I hope so. Yeah, just try not to touch anything. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go to bed now. Peace. <laughs> I hope you have sweet dreams. I'll see you in the morning. Okay, then. <clears throat> Already curled up on the couch. Looking quite cozy. Oh, gosh. Uh, remember the last time I had anyone in my home, even briefly. I've been so careful for such a long time. I don't know where she's been, or if she been as careful as, or if she, wow, or if she'd been as careful as I was. Uh, but yeah, that bandaged leg, a prickle of guilt surged up. Uh, good night. Flopping down on the bed. Exhausted, emotionally puzzled, mentally drained. Didn't even take long for me to fall deeply asleep. If I wake up and she's next to me, there's problems. Uh oh. Germination. Woke as usual. Sound of happy rooster. To the happy sound of a rooster crowing in the garden. The sky was clear, and early morning sun was bright and cheery. I think of morning like that would have put me in a great mood, but nope. All night my dreams have revolved around strange bugs infesting the cabin. Oh gosh. Hordes of them squirming inside through every crack. It must have been tense all night because my neck had a painful kink in it. Woken up on the wrong side of the bed. Yes. I suppose... I suppose I'd forgotten about my house guest, or at least I hadn't remembered to think about her yet. I was busy making a list in my head of the work that needed to get done today. And that's when the smoke alarm started shrieking. There was someone in my house. Then I let her in. 
and something was burning. Put on clothes and barreled down the stairs. And Mallory's in the kitchen looking mortified. There's some smoke, but no flames. Phew. Bringing a chair, jumping up, smiles to silence the smoke alarm. Thank you. I'm really so sorry. I tried wafting a dish towel at it, but the alarm just wouldn't stop. I didn't wake you, did I? Oh. Um, not exactly, but. Um. There was a pan with a charred black mass sitting in it, yeah. Didn't know what she'd burn, but she'd really burned it. What, 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 what is that? No, what was that is the more accurate question. Oh, I thought I'd make you breakfast as a thank you. My mom used to have the best recipe for potato pancakes that would always fuel me for the day. But these, well, I'm not totally sure what happened. I never used a stove like yours before, so this batch got a little overdone. Maybe I can scrape off the burnt part. Oh, a little? If it's black, it's not a little, it's a lot. I need to scrape off the burnt part. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Hmm. You know what? Forget I said that. It's all burnt part. I'll just clean up my mess and then I'll make you a new batch. And I will definitely be more careful this time. Yeah, you do that, I suppose, but... Did you say potato pancakes? Mm-hmm. They're the best. It's too bad this first batch didn't turn out because I spent all morning digging up the potatoes, washing them, peeling them. They were so tiny it took extra long, and I was worried you'd wake up before I could finish. Luckily, I've got some other treats on the go as well, so you're not going to starve. Just let me turn on the toaster real quick. You dug up my potatoes before they were ready. Wait, stop. Sad potato rocks. I'm sorry. I just wanted to make you some breakfast. I didn't mean to cause so much trouble. I'll clean this up. You're a klutz. Are you angry with me? Maybe a little. How was I supposed to answer that? Um... This is outrageous and I, I don't think it's out... It, it's a little outrageous. I don't necessarily think it's unfair. Um... Uh... Um, no, it's not that big a deal. It, it, I was upset. It, was, it definitely didn't like this injury, but it wasn't like she intentionally ruined my potatoes. She'd only been so audacious as to dig them up without permission. Long before they were ready. Even after I specifically told her not to touch anything. Not a breakfast person. I'm really sorry. I just wanted to do something nice as a thank you for letting me stay here. I promise I'll fix everything and then I'll just get ready to leave. Sure. Whatever. Suffer through breakfast. I turned away and went to a hall on my work clothes and boots. I'll be out in the yard for a while. Now I meet her cry. Now you're now you're gonna tug on my heartstrings like that. Wait, is she crying? Yes, I clearly made her cry. What did I get myself into? You know, I can't believe 
muttering, grumbling, and strumming out to the garden. Autumn is coming. I felt instantly calmer. Dealing with the power issue, making my usual rounds. Happy hens, check. Busy beehive, check. Rough count of the firewood in the shed. Me way back around to the front of the cabin. <laughs> the trap that she stumbled into. It had to have been painful. Something to keep my little bubble a little safer from dangerous wildlife. Never meant for anyone to get hurt. Wonder if I should rethink my setup. Further away from the house, closer to the woods. Yeah, that's probably where I should have been in the first place. Maybe I'll catch something less likely to ruin my day. Oh, wow. That's harsh. She didn't mean to ruin my day. Rabbit would be good. That's a bear trap. You're not going to catch a rabbit in a bear trap. At least I don't think that's how it's going to work. I ignored the sudden craving for rabbit stew and finished with the trap, wandering down to the garden. Noticing a small handful of potatoes uprooted and abandoned. Well, I can always plant something new here. It's the right time of year for garlic. Okay. The sun had already climbed high into the sky and I was feeling almost warm enough to peel off my sweater. I should probably go inside, maybe eat something, check in on poor girl. Get to work on my computer. Something didn't feel right. Oh gosh. She cleaned. She touched everything. Everything looks so clean. It literally sparkled, but how and why? She touched everything. This is really nice. It, like, really, really nice. <laughs> but where was she? She hadn't left already, had she? Uh oh. She's in the bathroom. Don't don't open the door. Please don't open the door. Please don't open the door. She couldn't. She wouldn't. <laughs> Why? Why would I throw open the bathroom door? That's like... No. 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 <gasps> Why? What? What are you doing? <laughs> I was just taking a bath. Clearly. That's my water supply. It, it's still warm if you want to use it. But did she not get it? My drinking water, my everything water. What do you think? Why did you use so much? Uh-oh. I wish she'd run the cistern dry. Nothing until the next rainfall. Who oh my that? gosh, I had no idea. I had no idea. I'm so sorry. I really didn't know. I'd never run out of water before. I hasn't been so careful. This could be the very day I so deeply feared would come. How do you survive this way? It's like you're constantly wasting things. While you were out in the rain, could your bubble side kick you out because you don't know what, how to think before you act? Oh snap, I just... Uh oh. I'm gonna make her cry again, aren't I? 
just don't drain that water or repurpose it for laundry or something. Gosh dang it, I made her cry again. Check the rain barrels, like right that second. Stop thinking about how naive, careless, and wasteful she was. Yeah. Uh, what do you do with her shimmery eyes or how sweet she seemed to be when everything else was horrible? Nope. I checked the rain barrels. The situation wasn't as dire as I feared as long as it rained again. Sometime in the next few weeks, we'd be okay. Yay. Still, I sat at my computer for a long time, entirely unable to focus on my work. <clears throat> Oh gosh, she's only wearing the towel. Seriously? Oh, uncomfortable, yeah. Oh gosh, what is she up to? Haven't we had enough confrontation for one day? Let's not. Let's not. Don't worry about it. Oh gosh. She, she can't cause too much trouble with a box of clothes. Watch her watch her do something. Now that I said that. If anything, she, if she was still in my house, hadn't we agreed she would leave in the morning? But I didn't say anything because oddly enough, it was kind of nice having someone puttering around, making noise here and there, reminding me I wasn't alone. Yay. Of my youth. The summer I spent in the cabin with my family. She wanted to hang around and head out later in the day. Then when there was less sun, that was her call as long as she didn't wreck anything else. Suddenly it was dark out and I was starving. And she still hadn't left. And there were nice savory smells. Oh gosh, she's back in the kitchen. What is she doing? How dare she? Oh gosh. Which made me feel annoying feelings like impressed and kind of excited to eat it. <laughs> Uh, she noticed me standing there and smiled way too brightly. Oh, good, you're finished working. That's Why is she still only in the towel? Ready. Why is she in the towel? Still. Into two large plates. What is it? It's all made from freeze-dried proteins and grains I found in the pantry. And some spices, which, by the way, make all the difference when it comes to flavoring a dish. Oh, no. How much did she use? Oh, and I only used things that were already open, so I hope I didn't overstep again. I can tell you work really hard. And I know I made a mess of things, and I just really wanted to make it up to you. Can you put on some clothes, please? determined to have a net positive impact here. Your, your net positive impact can start with clothing. Suddenly very concerned about how low the bar was for her. Mm, yeah, I appreciate her efforts. Wash your hands before you started? Maybe? Yes, yeah, silly. And I still don't have any symptoms of any sicknesses either. Okay, that's good. So come on, let's eat. I want you to enjoy it while it's hot. I took my seat plate and sat down at the far end of the table, away from her. 
where we ate in silence. It was really delicious, when I guess she had it in her head based on that morning. Try and get some answers. Yes, uh, answers, important. Who is she? Where's she come from? Well, where's she come from? It's not too bad. Clean it up, put a fresh bandage on it. Yeah, let's do that. Getting you home. Uh, right. Home. What? You don't want to go home? My home's too good for you? My home is so good? But if you're on your own like me... But you don't exactly uh, look like you um, live in the forest. Nope. I live in the forest. So where are you headed? There must be someone somewhere. I'll figure something out. I want to make sure you're going to be okay. I thought you just wanted me to leave. Well, yes. But I want you to be safe about it. Know something about your situation. Maybe I could help. That's sweet of you, but... Her situation is she's scatterbrained and can't remember to put on clothes. I'm sorry. I'm just not ready to talk about it. Okay, then. So beautiful as if she were a digital painting. <laughs> ha 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 ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Hmm. Can I ask just one more question? Why are you still wearing the towel? <laughs> Finally. <laughs> we're acknowledging the elephant in this situation. Yes. Yes, you have. Oh, I can't believe it. How do I forget these things? Oh, it's so embarrassed. Oh, my gosh. Uh-huh. Yeah. That is... I guess was one way of putting it, what she is. I'll be back to clean up as soon as I'm decent. Uh-huh. When I <laughs> Oh my gosh. How many cliches can we hit? I hadn't even considered how much pain she must have been in. She cooked and cleaned and tried to pay me back. Pay me back for what, though? Only wanted to help, haven't even done a great job. And I'm trying to send her away knowing full well she has nowhere to go. Great. They're going to guilt trip me into keeping her here. No, couldn't do that. And now I feel like I have to make things up to her. Uh-huh. 3D printer. It was there for emergencies, and this seemed urgent enough. This is not something... 3D printers aren't exactly fast, from what I understand. Oh, she's back in her dress. Oh, you already cleaned up. I guess that's it then. Oh boy. Word vomit. You should stay. Wait, what? I 
I've been a jerk, yeah. Seems to be. So, I'll keep going. I was kind of shocked to have you show up here. I haven't had anyone visit ever. This has always been my place, my family's place. I guess I felt sort of invaded. Yeah, I guess that's one way to put it. But now I realize that's stupid. Basically what I'm trying to say is I wouldn't feel right making you leave. When you're clearly in a bad spot, I have means to help you and there's no reason why I shouldn't. If you want to leave, that's fine, but there's no rush. Cool. Just cool. Just so long as you don't waste all my supplies again. I 3D printed a sheet of gauze with a potato pattern. Out of what? Plastics? Gauze is not made of plastic. Can I redress your leg now? <laughs> Cover my hands, mask, gloves. I'm gonna sit by the first aid kit, which I idly as I clean packed her wound. Set up on the couch, bitter good night. Wasn't exactly tired, but I figured it was better to leave things off on a pleasant note before things get awkward again. Oh gosh. Okay, we're back in bed. I was angry that morning, scared and uncomfortable throughout the day. And how is it now? A matter of hours later, I can feel such a gentle fondness. Oh gosh. Moody Hermit. I don't know if that's it. You know, people need contact with other people. If there's anything that the last few years of probably actually taught us. Yeah, probably right. No, not right. Closed our eyes and waited for sleep. Chapter 4 Growth I was refreshed. I once again smelled something a delicious in the kitchen y kind of funny smell. Oh gosh. I could get used to this. It was the start of a new routine. Had to be. She was here now. I think I want one of us taking advantage of the other. I definitely needed her to understand why certain things were important, like conserving water. But she might actually enjoy being involved with the work I did on the daily. Maybe we could share the load. Sam to Frodo. Oh gosh. My heart felt kind of bright and big by the thought of having a friend, even if just for a while. It was something to break up the mind-numbing monotony. That sweet poke -po of that sweet post-apocalypse lifestyle. It should be post-apocalyptic lifestyle. I've been living. All right. <laughs> I could be an okay teacher. I taught a few online courses before for beginnings wanting to learn C sharp. Teaching someone how to feed a chicken shouldn't be any harder than that. Oh gosh. Is 
you get her back to me, struggling to reach. Your pot is boiling. Oh, you surprised me. Good morning. How did you sleep? Where's the pot? That's nice. Good. Uh, <laughs> yes, please. I was looking for aspirin and I thought I saw a bottle up there, but I couldn't really reach. I didn't want to risk standing up on a chair or something with my leg. Oh. I did notice a little redness yesterday, but I didn't think it was infected. Must wait, you're not feeling sick, are you? No, no, it's just the leg. It's a bit achy. Oh. Go order more. Oh. Thank you so much. You're the best. Trying not to smile. Why am I trying not to smile? Why not just do it? Let it out. Let the smile out. We're still standing too close. Maybe it's time for another temperature check. Wholesome. Absolutely. <laughs> just to be sure. Could you um, move your hair? <laughs> Fever free. Okay, you're good, but we should keep distancing because all enough time has passed to know for sure. How's this for a second attempt at breakfast? Very. Much better. A little omelette. Stuff with steaming hot rice, probably more seasons. Whole thing a downright heavenly aroma. Oh gosh. Shakespeare. Till this breakfast. You are a nerd. Yes, yes I am. Any questions? You know what? This scene makes me think of are the camera angles in anime rather strange sometimes it's a very nice omelette I'm looking at the omelette nothing else oh no hope didn't embarrass her you've been alone too long probably based on what the story of this thing Really, this is amazing, and I don't deserve it. Have a nice breakfast. We enjoyed our breakfast at the dining room table, sitting across from each other. Through the great big, great big windows at her back, the yard looks bright and inviting. It's like we'll have great weather today. I was thinking of doing some work in the garden for a while. Basically, she needs a lot of maintenance. It's a constant running to-do list to keep everything going. It seems pretty amazing. Is it hard to take care of it all by yourself? A little. Well, what can I do to help? Uh... Well, you already cleaned my house. And she's injured. Mm. We're having this debate. 
It's like, do we want her to help us out? But she's injured. I'm taking the she's injured approach. You have more than enough to help me. Anyway, with that injury, you should be resting more than anything else. Yeah. I've got some books on the shelf over there if you just want to sit and read a bit while I'm working. I'd much rather be outside enjoying the nice weather. Well, you can read outside too. <laughs> or I could come with you. You could teach me all about how you live off the land. Okay. I mean, if you're going to volunteer yourself. Other at least a little bit, shouldn't we? Mm hmm. All right, all right. Come along. So we headed out. I offered her a jacket, she declined. But it was her call. At least the sun was warm today and there wasn't much wind. Mm hmm Lead her through the she led the way when she led the way through the garden. She examined different things. She had more than enough. I grew more than enough for one person. Often canning it. That's very practical. Except for those potatoes. Oh Rip. my gosh! Are these strawberries? They look so plump and juicy, and they're so red! How did you grow them? They're actually the easiest thing to maintain around here. Pretty much every year, I get three whole harvests out of this patch. That's some good pro got some good production, I think. Really? What do you do with all of them? Jams. Look, jams. Ha ha! I was right. Jams, salads, smoothies. Dehydrated for easy snacking. But I think they're best right off the bush. Welcome to have some. Her eyes are huge and they're twinkling. How does she do that? She's an anime girl. Simple. I've never eaten a strawberry before. Are you sure? And how do you even know what it is? And how do you even... Never mind, maybe you saw a picture. I don't know, but... Never. Watch out for slugs. Mm, oh, wow, these taste just like sunshine. I could eat these every day. They taste like sunshine? I don't know if that's how I would describe a strawberry, but okay. Oh look, this one's shaped like a heart. Oh, this one here is huge. Look how shiny and red it is. It's like something out of a picture book. Mm-hmm. Bug munching on that one. Enjoy your meal, little bug. <laughs> She's chattering away, eating strawberries. We're gonna start raking some leaves. Can I do that? I suppose. It's okay, go easy on the leg. Feels fine. Please. There's no step in the, the bear trap that we moved. Just 
doing a good job, though, supposedly. Do do do, <laughs> pulling up weeds. Something about this girl stirred up. Stirred up my insides, oh gosh. She's like a cartoon princess, too happy and determined, almost too good to be real. Yes, because she's an anime girl. Where you determined that from her eyes? I, for one, definitely couldn't, wouldn't, ugh. Wouldn't have been tough enough to pick up a rake with a leg injury like that or anything and sat on the couch playing video games until it healed. So I guess I felt a feeling that was partway between admiration and total bewilderment. I feel like it's less of a dress and more of a shirt, an overlong shirt. Good work. Good. Oh my gosh. Looking good. Work. Good work. I mean. Let's move all this stuff into the compost bin. Okay. What's that? It's a thing that's filling up with weeds and old leaves. Put all the dead plant matter and vegetable waste I have into the tumbler. This is a sealed container, traps a lot of heat inside, it helps the stuff break down. See the handle on the side? Use it to turn it so everything is mixed together. And once it's all broken down, I mix it in with the garden soil. It gives the soil extra nutrients, which helps the plants grow. It's kind of like the circle of life. L'histoire de la vie. Save all the peels and ends from the produce I eat, turn them into compost, and use that to grow more stuff. So the garden really provides its own nutrients for the next crop of plants that grow there. <clears throat> wow, that's amazing. Yes, yes it is. It's a big part of reducing waste. It's like a big friendly leaf monster. Num num num. Um, sure. It looks so clean and healthy now. Then, with a twinge of anxiety, I noticed how close we were to one another. How close have you been working? But it was probably fine. She seemed healthy, more than healthy. She was handling her injury remarkably well. Was that the so-called power of positive thinking? <coughs> no, <clears throat> sorry. It's just my throat is dry. I'm really thirsty. Oh, right. We have been working for a while. <laughs> I'll go get us some water. No fatigue, no symptoms of the virus, just one cough, which was justified. Solar panels. Why? What are they for? Power. What? Really? Yes. I 
Face towards the sun and spread your arms out. The nuclear furnace that sits in the sky, 150 million kilometers away. The current makes its way into a charge controller, which turns the current voltage for the batteries. My computer appliances and lights are all modified to run off that DC voltage. Oh, and the charge controller is hooked up to a battery that can store all that incoming energy, so we can still run power. In the power for a while, even when the sun has gone away. So you capture the sunshine and turn it into energy? Isn't that like what flowers do? Y yes, to an extent. That's one way to th that's one way to think about it. Yeah. It's science, but if yeah. If we'd had something like this where I grew up, then the citywide power outages wouldn't have mattered so much. What? Uh, give me a few minutes to sweep the leaves off the roof, then we can go say hi to the hens. Oh, okay. They're over there, just FYI. In case I happen to fall to my death or something. What? Um. Uh. Wow. If it happens, just bury me in the garden. Don't kid around like that. It's not funny. Well, apparently I thought it was funny enough to say it. Keys down to her in the garden. She got butterflies around her. See how everything had fallen into disrepair. So long ago, announced that the public's buildings would be closed down, closing down indefinitely. Sports teams, movie theaters, malls, offices had all been shuttered. Even apartment complexes and private homes had to change. People were moved and shuffled around. Fences went up and shared spaces became inaccessible. Anything to keep people apart from each other, or at least in their own small safety bubbles. Hadn't set foot in the city in years, and looking at it now, I had no desire to ever set foot there again. Ha ha ha. With a sad sigh, I turned my back to the ghost city and climbed down from my roof. Met her in the garden with a forced smi and forced a smile. Ready? Chicken coop. Aspen she'd taken wearing off already. Feathers flying. For as long as they've been alive, I've been al alone alone. So they're either happy for me or scared of you. Not sure. <laughs> Careful with them. Okay. I 
Have you ever held a chick before? They are, they are kind of cute. They're not as puffy as, as this art makes them appear. I suppose they can be, but at least the ones that I've in, interacted with before were not this kind of puffy. They're not little puffballs. It was weird. I couldn't fathom loving something so easily or so quickly. I had a hunch she'd taken, have taken a bullet for these baby chicks. Yeah, they get smelly. I don't find it bad at all. Do you want to feed them? There's a bag of green just behind you. The chicks started eating soon the adult hens came to join them. <laughs> They're so happy. Well, they better be. We're feeding them. Huh? What do you mean? Uh. Well, some of them are food. I'm going to answer honestly on this one. And others will um, yeah, be butchered for meat. It was necessary. Oh boy. I understand. I guess I just never thought about it before. It makes me a little sad. L'histoire de la vie. I'll be okay though. Thank you for bringing me to meet them. Oh, I hope I didn't bust the romance. Cheep, cheep, chirp, cheep. <laughs> she nodded as we strolled across the grass. It felt a little awkward. So there was one more thing I really wanted to show you. It's the most intricate and nerdy of all my systems, and by far my favorite. Fish are part of a system I use to grow plants and food indoors. That way I can at least have some fresh things to eat in winter. Oh? Like what? Aquaponics. Yeah. Come on. Okay. To the aquaponics room. Purple light is kind of strange because these are grow lights. Their wavelength makes the sun and gives the plants the specific red and blue light they need. It's a way of tricking them into thinking they're outdoors. Not that plants can think. <laughs> Q 
caring for plants and the fish, watching them grow and change and live, and only feeling connection. Didn't get from the outside, outside garden or the hens. I wonder how many forums I joined or chats I took part of. Didn't have that kind of connection. This is amazing. I know, but I wasn't expecting so many plants. You have, you have so much food. And now we get something about her not having lots of food. Oh, ah. Uh. Okay, ooh. You guys have only seen something like this for the first time. It must have seemed like a mad scientist lair or something. Paying more closely at one of the fish tanks. Why are there plants growing out of the tank water? Mm, technically, they're not. They have their own water. It's just been cycled through the fish tank as well. That's how they get nutrients. It's like the circle of life, kind of. I feed the fish and they produce waste which contains ammonium. I guess we're in nitrates and then to nit and nitrites, then to nitrates, which the plants can use to grow. These tubes carry the tank water up through a filter. The filter traps all the bits of waste and gunk that won't help the plants. So now nutrient rich water flows through and into the plant pots. It's all a careful balance. Everything works in harmony. I feed the fish, keep the filters clean, and they're able to take care of my plants for me. Here, feed them. Just take a bit and sprinkle it in. Okay. The fish swim excitedly towards the flank, opening and closing their mouths. They're really hungry. Looking yes. at them feels peaceful. Yeah. Now I'm imagining scenarios with her. Watching, setting up the system with her from scratch, planting seeds of favorite flowers or special fruits, celebrating a first harvest. Who taught you all of this? Um. My parents used to take care of their plants sort of like this when I was young. And then I taught myself a bunch more by reading or trial and error. My family had nothing like this. There was one grocery store in our neighborhood. We'd have to wait in line for ages and then the shelves would be practically empty. We had to scrounge and make do with food that was either spoiled or just plain not enough. Uh huh. That's rough. All these systems you use. If we could have had something like this, then maybe. You wouldn't be small and scrawny? Tell me. I love that you wanted to show me all this stuff. But, um, what do you do for fun around here? Fun? All work and no play, yada yada. Let's go make some tea, get something to show you my video games. Goodbye to the fish, went back out in the brain at hall, following the closed room behind us. Playing games on the tablet and snacking. 
just the idol clicker with just the right balance of dopamine inducing rewards told me she played before with her sister when they were children. I used to hold the record for fastest speedrun of this game, you know. You did not. There's no such thing as a speedrun of a clicker game, and if there was, that record would be held by a bot. Ouch. I didn't notice her shit. Oh crap, she's getting close. We were too comfortable. And then she leaned against me. She was falling asleep. Um. Uh, Sweater dress, the cute pin short, and your silky hair. <clears throat> and there, <clears throat> uh, looked like she'd be there for the rest of the night. My nightly cup of herbal tea. We'd snacked all afternoon, so I wasn't hungry, but that cup of tea before bed was an absolute must. Mm -hmm. That night, I dreamt of the chicken coop being empty. There were only traces left behind of the hens, and the feathers were scattered. Coyotes must have spirited them away in my dream brain thought. Oh no. Complete chapter four. Hmm. I don't know how many chapters there are in this. So I think we've been playing for about an hour and a half. I think. I think we'll stop here. Um, nope. How do I save? Oh, here we are. More options. There we go. Are we sure we want to go to the main menu? Yes. Okay. So just in case there's not so many chapters left in this story, we're going to stop here for today. Go back over to here. Um, yeah, just in case there's not enough chapters left, we want to save some for tomorrow. So that's what we're going to do. And if there ends up being a bunch of chapters, we'll just have to push through tomorrow. Thank you so much for coming tonight, everybody. I realized it was very relaxing, very chill. Um, but that's kind of the way this was supposed to be tonight. So... Thank you so much for coming tonight, and we'll pick this, we'll continue the story tomorrow. Uh, my name is Flizza, and yeah, nothing, nothing else to say, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.